So I think I've got a bit of an uncommon problem. Yesterday we went out for the day and um, somebody left the greenhouse open, which might not sound like a problem, um, but normally we put the mesh over that I've shown you before, so the little frame that Stephen made me to stop the birds getting in. And by birds, I mean our birds, our poultry. Um, yesterday it got left open and the turkeys got in the greenhouse and everything was just all over the place apparently. And I say apparently because Stephen rang me and Grace came out and tidied up as best she could because I think they knew I would have some sort of fit going out and seeing the damage. So needless to say, I've got to spend some time in the greenhouse. It's, it's all just a bit all over the place again. I don't think anything is totally broken or snapped or anything like that, but there's definitely things leaning, fell over, things need tidying up again. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get sorted with getting it watered to start off with. Lots to do. This variety of tomato here is called Bloody Butcher. And the reason I got it is because I found it funny. Because Stephen's a butcher. And sometimes that's my pet name for him. <laughs> anyway, so this variety here is um, recommended. This is on my list for next year, definitely. Now, some of these cucumbers are just not looking too great in the leaves. Um, but they're still producing more flowers. Now, these gherkins, though, look. I nearly missed this one. How can you miss that? doing amazing so although there's some discoloration of the leaves look at this one i'm going to pick these and make fridge pickles so even this size aren't too small now something i have learned about the cucumbers is this variety here there's actually nothing on it the telegraph variety because we did pick it they were the cucumbers that had i think was it both male and female flowers and is that the right way around these are the cucumbers that were really bitter tasting um so it's not a variety i'm going to look into it it's something to do with the male and female flowers and i can't remember what the details are at the minute um i'm going to look into it but i will not be growing they produced fantastic cucumbers but they were so bitter they, they weren't edible um so i won't be growing the telegraph variety again there's some amazing tomatoes here but there's also a very big mess so i'm going to get those harvested i've tried to kind of string these up as best i can it's ridiculous to say, but I can't wait till next year to implement what we've learned this year on how we're going to do the tomatoes because I won't be using these pots in here. But anyway, that's for another day. So I'm going to get this plant tidied up best I can, strip all the leaves off it and get those red tomatoes harvested. Some good news. Look at these beauties. These aubergines are doing well. That one's not as far on. There's one at the back. Looks like these guys are being nibbled by something, but they'll be just fine. These op opalca tomatoes are a law unto themselves, but are producing well. So I'm going to be keeping the seed from these guys and growing these next year. These are my paste tomatoes. And these guys here, I'm just thrilled to bits with them. I think they're either the Super Mama or the Big Mama F1s. So unfortunately, I won't be able to keep seed from that. Now, I don't know if anyone has ever tried to keep seed from an F1, because I know it just doesn't grow true, but... Have you ever done it? Have you ever tried it and it's actually worked? There's some other, other ones coming here. Not sure what those varieties are. It might be Bloody Butcher again, or it might be Moneymaker. But we've got some not so good ones. This plant isn't, isn't doing so well. Oh look, we're getting visitors. You guys can bugger off. You keep destroying stuff. Go on. Out. No, nope, you're not coming in. No, 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 no. No, go on, go on. Cheeky. But there's lots of tomatoes coming, as you can see. I've cleared the leaves from the lower plants. And getting along and doing these ones here. So you can see this guy at the back has snapped, fell over. So I need to get into him somehow. But it's difficult because I've I've strung all of these up, so I need to need to figure that out. Need to tidy up that one. That, that one's left to tidy up. But yeah, the, these aubergines. Oh my goodness, thrilled to bits with those guys. We've got these rock and fort the yellow beans coming along, and then we've got more lettuce, beetroot that the turkeys didn't sit on some basil i'm gonna get some of that in today and these are the little sweet millions so these are just my snacking plants when i'm in here they're so good right into the jungle now this chili plant here pepper plant 
It's produced a red fruit, but it's gone moldy. I'm not sure what's the matter with that. I need to go and check what variety it is actually. I've got the packet, so I should be able to tell. But it's producing. And we've got some, I think they're Serranos. I need to go and get the packets. Romanos. These are definitely, definitely Poblano. Know how I know? Because it's one of the surviving tags. So you can wait for these poblanos to turn red or you can eat them green. They're supposed to be really good for stuffing red. I'm going to see what I can... I might do half and half. But yeah, these are uh, can probably be eaten like this. Or waited to mature. I think the heat develops as the... Oh, will you go out? Come on, or else I'll give you this pepper. They're my cabbages that I've harvested, getting protected from turkeys. Honestly, the things you have to do. Anyway, I'm going to get on. This is my little box of tricks that have fell off while I've been harvesting. I'm not trying to harvest at the minute. I'm just trying to tidy up. But these are the ones that I have taken off. Look what I just found. Hiding. I don't think this is a telegraph variety. It feels really spiky and the other telegraphs weren't. So I'm hoping that this is going to be edible and not bitter. We'll see finished in the greenhouse for now and I just came out and something caught my eye that I did not expect to see. Look! The all. Oh my god, there's another one, there's another one. Oh my god. Okay, these totally have just come out of nowhere. Oh, I'm so thrilled. I didn't think we were going to get any ca any cabbages, any cauliflowers until much later this year and even then I was questioning if we would. Oh, this is amazing. So these guys are ready to harvest. Some of them, um, sorry. Oh! This one is starting to blow a little bit, so it needs taken out today. So that is gonna happen. And I'm gonna have a look what else we've got in here. Because I said this bed was getting demolished by the butterflies. Yeah, they've laid all their eggs on them, you see. So these need to come out and they need washing. But that is amazing, because this bed just started to look so sorry for itself once I took the, the netting off. Which makes me think though, so so some of the netting that you can, that I've been using is obviously the arch stuff, but I think I'm going to have to invest in high enough netting so that it's higher than these plants. And obviously then the butterflies can't sort of lay on the net and touch them. I'm so pleased with that though, that's brilliant. Right, that's another job for today. And I'm also wanting to, these onions are not ready just yet. They're still hanging on there. And these carrots definitely need thinning out. So what I'm going to do is start thinning them. Oh, an onion that needs harvesting. Hello. I'm going to start thinning them. Eating these bits of carrots. And eating these bits. We're going to make pesto out of these as well as what we did with the onion tops. So this bed has been super productive this year. Right, it's a little bit later on in the day now and I am back in the greenhouse. It's cooled off again because it got a little bit warm and I think I need to get some of these peppers harvested. I'm going to take some tomatoes in. Um, August is, yeah, I didn't even mention, it's August. Happy August. August is all about harvesting really. So obviously not forgetting, um, getting some of those other seeds in, which I'll go through a little bit later on. But I'm just now harvesting like a mad woman and I'm also doing a challenge that every day in August I'm going to be preserving something. So I'll put up a separate video on that probably and just show you what the results are. I don't think I'll have time to do a video on everything that I'm, the, the actual preserving, um, but I'll do the results at least. So I'm really excited about that. But for now, I'm back in the greenhouse to get some more harvesting done and then we'll be thinking about what seeds we can sow in August as well.
This one's Opalka. Very excited about this. I'm going to be keeping seeds from this guy. So I'm nowhere near the yield I was hoping for from a tomato perspective, but that's okay. I've got a local supplier that I can top up from um, who get me tomatoes at a reasonable price as well. Obviously, I don't want to be spending. Um, that's that's not what the plan was this year. But unfortunately, we've had a year of just crazy ups and downs with the weather, with the lambs, with the turkeys, with the everything that, that's been happening with the heat, the freezing cold, all of that. You guys know, you don't need me to tell you. So I suspected that some harvest would be great and some wouldn't. Unfortunately, it's the tomatoes that have suffered when that was probably where, the one that I was wanting to do best on as well. Never mind though. So I will top up from the green grocer, um, but it's supporting local businesses too. And it's also filling my shelves for a reasonable price, a lot better than I could get it in the supermarket and a lot healthier, of course. But for now, I'm gonna start on getting the peppers too. Oh, can you see this? So I think these guys are the peppercinis. No, not the peppercinis, the um, sweet bananas. So they are turning to the yellow color. They'll continue and turn orange and red, etc. But it says they are best picked when they are this color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick them. There's more flowers coming on the top. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna harvest these guys. That was also tell the plant that it to, to keep on producing the flowers. I don't want these to go over. I'll come back, there's lots more flowers and lots more peppers. I'm gonna pop this one over there and bring some more over to harvest. And he's perfect examples. This little guy, he's turned red. I didn't taste that for heat. Not now. And I think these are the peppercinis because they are not as... Let me show you. Oh no, I'm lying. These could be the banana peppers or the peppercinis. Either way, they're getting picked. They're supposed to be very similar. I'm really pleased with how these are doing. Something I've been really wanting to make um, is cowboy candy. I've heard so much of it while I've been doing my research over the last few months to a year. Come on. Well, one thing's for sure, this plant will feel lighter after this. Now there's no more fruit flowers on this plant. I hope it goes on producing again. I'm gonna leave those to get a bit bigger. Now this one is definitely the Hungarian hot wax. That will be quite hot. Put that one separate. And I'm gonna leave these to ripen. I've gone to do a bit of research on that about harvesting them before they've ripened. I can't remember what these guys are, but I'm going to take a couple. It might be Anaheim or it might be Santana, but I'm going to take some for a heat test. You can eat any of them green up, I believe. We'll see. Left a couple on. Wow, this guy's. Please harvest me. Look at this. I've just looked whilst um, I was thinking about my labels. I looked for the price of a label printer. Um, I don't know if anyone uses one for specifically for plant labels. Oh my goodness, they're so expensive. I'm talking about one that'll like a laser print that'll just print them off, not one that you've got to manually do by hand. If anyone uses a label printer that they can recommend, one that doesn't take more time than writing it, then I'd really appreciate you letting me know. Now I think, I think these are peppercinis. Now this one's gone red, so in theory, I believe they're supposed to be a bit sweeter on the red rather than hotter. Can't remember. Oh, that one's that one's been eaten. Oh, 
no bugs or anything, but not good. Let's get rid of that. You're not welcome like that. Right, I'm going to taste the red one of these before I harvest any more because they might need to go red and I don't want to waste them. Right, take your leaves over there. This jalapeno, bless it. I know it's jalapeno, this one. Um, it's only got two on it. It needs to go into a bigger pot and that is happening tonight. So I'm taking these off because they're ready. And he needs to go in a bigger pot. Uh, these are the Serranos. So I'll get those with some of the oh, turkey. Out. Honestly, you wish you'd take a hint. Doesn't take long. The basket is getting quite heavy. Oh, aubergines. So we aren't just getting food from our garden. Um, we go out and forage for things as well. So excuse the dodgy shaking of the camera. I'm just walking with my basket again, literally just outside where we live. So we're lucky enough to have lots of things on the doorstep. It's a bit early for brambles and a bit early for elderberries and things like that here. But something that we are in abundance of is rose bay, rose bay willow herb. Jack's with me as well, what's he doing? Um, or also known as fireweed. And you can make a replacement honey, jellies, and you can dry them for herbal teas. So that's something that we're going to go and grab now. Yet again, if you're interested in what I do with it, let me know and I'll do a separate video. But I don't want to bore people any more than I am. <laughs> this is what we're looking for. It grows from the bottom upwards. So you only ever get a few flowers at a time. But that's all right. There's quite a few here. And there's a whole host there. And there's plenty more. So we're going to get harvesting. <gasps> Jack's thrilled as you can hear. Got a better harvest here. I'm going to get these guys. This is the colour of the fireweed. Um, it's more of a syrup than a honey because I was a little bit tight on the sugar and I don't think I used enough lemon. So I'm going to have another go with another batch and I'll take syrup any day. But this is fantastic. The colour is just amazing. It's lovely. So I'm just leaving that to set. So I've got just under a litre. And this lid has already popped down, so this one, but I'm just going to leave them set before I get them on the pantry shelf. And there's something else which I think is really exciting that I want to show you guys. And that's in here. So this was our nursery for our chickens, or for our young chicks before. And now we are turning it in to a cold room. I mean, technically it's a cold room that's not a cold room because it's not cold in here. It's a lot cooler in here now, actually walking in than it is outside. But the idea is these, <laughs> you know, if you've seen any of my other videos where the kitchen's missing, well, this is where it went. So um, let me flip the camera around a sec. So we decided to get a new kitchen, um, I don't know, a couple of months ago now, and started working on it. Um, we tend to do that once we make a decision, we just start cracking on with it. And then when we went and ordered some of the cabinets that we need, we're not getting as many as this to replace what we've got. We want quite a simple kitchen. We realised that the supply chain's disrupted. <laughs> we can't get the kitchen till October. So now we've got kind of half a kitchen. But anyway, it's in here. And this is going to be massively useful. So we've got um, a storage tray here, which I'll show you in just a second. The kitchen that Stephen's fitted. This needs filling with wine, I think. Do you think? I think that would be a good thing. And this is going to help me out to store all of my vegetables and crops and who knows uh, what else of the winter. So the carrots, the beets, the onions, uh, cabbages, I can hang. Let me show you the ceiling. Steve's going to actually fill this ceiling in, but I want to use it because it's quite high. I want to use it to hang things from as well. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like my root cellar um, here, in <laughs> here in the northeast of England. So let me flip this around and show you what we've got going on. You guys saw some of these onions that I harvested and this is literally just mesh, whatever type of mesh it is, I don't know, on a frame that Stephen's made with a couple of pallets. This is temporary because he wants to do a proper one. It's look nice, but this works for me. And literally these onions were taken out of the ground and we put them in here upside down so that nothing drains back up into the onion. 
and they've gone nice and uh, the cure so they've gone nice and dry in here and then now these guys actually looking at them can be plaited and what I'll do is just plait them and just hang them up in you know on the beams on the nails in different places like that but these cupboards at the moment have nothing in them and I'm hoping they're going to be full of wonderful produce by the winter Steve's still working in here as you can tell <laughs> bless him he comes on from works and gets on with more work and the drawers I don't know tools and things maybe I'm not sure what I'm going to use this room for yet so this actually this beam here is where we're going to section whoops okay tripping over that beam is where we're going to section off he's going to put a wall in and it's going to have a door here so where I'm actually stood now can be used as whatever else we want to use it for um yet to be decided and then this bit here will be just a room just a small room so I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for what I'm going to use the countertops for but we do know that it's for vegetable storage at least so yeah really pleased I think this is a fantastic I didn't really have a second use for these cupboards whereas Stephen was like oh we can use them for the for the cold room instead of me having to create buy more wood and etc etc so great job great decision and now I've just brought all of these garlics over that we harvested. So these are my soft neck garlic. And these will also just go here. Some of these holes might be a bit big. But this, for, oops, for example, these are the most recent harvests. Try and do this with one hand. Just literally push these guys through. And that's him until he's dry. So I'm going to get this filled up now. And then I'm going to head on over and show you what my next task is. So the last thing I want to show you this week before I sign off is thinning out these carrots. They probably should have been thinned out ages ago, um, but I haven't. <laughs> so don't follow necessarily what I do. This is just how, how I do it, because I think if you disturb them, you might encourage the carrot root fly to come and we don't want to do that but I'm, I'm okay taking the risk because what i'm going to do with these carrots is thin them out and then i'm going to use the carrot tops for today to do a carrot top pesto which will be my preserving for today well amongst other things but that's the one for the the challenge that i'm going to be doing or that i am doing and then we'll get some more stuff on the shelves some more, well sorry some more pesto in the freezer because we don't can that and these guys will have a little bit more space to grow so i'm going to get this done and then i think that's probably the last thing for this week wow it's a beautiful day again right let's have a look what we've got going on this is that is it chicory i can't remember but i'm sure that it's chicory or could it be endive can someone tell me if you know um it's just growing wild and it is so bitter i'm thinking i'm going to probably give it to the chickens if they'll eat it um these onions in here i need to take out and get these guys over in the cold room that i've just showed you to dry out might leave them outside today um for a little bit because it's actually a really nice day so there's quite a few onions amongst these here they'll start into they'll rot if i leave them any longer amongst all of the uh, the foliage here so i'm going to get those out and get these carrots thinned This guy forgot to grow. Okay, I need to be a bit more methodical about this. <laughs> Work one row at a time, Percy. One row at a time. And the cork is in here. Oh, we've got a soggy one. A soggy bum. Do you know, I'm so pleased. You can hardly see me because of the shade. That doesn't matter. I'm so pleased that I intercropped the carrots between the onions that's worked so well definitely not to self do that next year there we go this is literally like this is literally next to nothing compared to what's to come out you can see though we've got baby carrots farming so i'm really pleased about that if these were a little bit bigger you could probably just well you could just eat them 
um, I'm actually going to give them these ones to the chickens and I'm going to go through thin them all out properly. I've got something else I need to get done first now though, so that's why the chickens are going to get these. If you're interested in the carrot top pesto, I can do a quick 5-10 minute video on that, just let me know. But I'll be doing that for the freeze and for fresh eating. But for now, this is the end of another vlog. I think this is week 7 now or something. I don't know about you, but I'm loving doing this. And it's going to be so interesting to look back on next year to see what was happening this year. Who knows what state the world will be in next year weather-wise. <laughs> I'm just clarifying that weather-wise. Who knows what state the world will be in. But in this instance, weather-wise. So I hope you've enjoyed spending another week with me. I want to quickly go and give these to the chickens. Get my other jobs done that I need to get done. And then come back out and harvest these properly as uh, thinnings. I won't be leaving any round because I really don't want to encourage the carrot root fly. But hopefully doing this won't be too bad. These guys are basking in the sun. Scared them. <laughs> so they're going to enjoy those. But for now, please give me a like if you enjoy these videos. Subscribe as usual if you enjoy the content. And let your friends know if you've got any like-minded friends who might be interested in the channel. But for now, I'll speak to you in the comments below. Please leave me a comment. I love reading your guys' input into my videos. And we will talk very soon. Bye for now.